Lifetime on Court, the show where we break down your favorite made-for-TV movies one bottle at a time. I'm your host, Patrick Serrano, and today we are talking about Beware of the Midwife. I didn't know midwives were supposed to be scary, but Beware of the Midwife stars Mona Traore, Michael Xavier, Raven Deuda, and Bukala Waffle. On the show, we either pour it up or put a cork in it. So what are we going to do to this movie? Put a cork in it. Now, if you haven't seen the movie and you want to avoid spoilers, you're going to want to go ahead and hit pause and then come on back because I'm about to do a little breakdown starting now. The movie begins with Sarah and Kevin who are the most attractive couple ever. They are expecting their first baby. Sarah is hesitant to have a baby in the hospital because her cousin died of childbirth at the same hospital. So why would you want to have a baby there? Plus, her sister, Danny, had a good experience with a midwife and a home birth. Dr. and Kevin aren't supportive of Sarah's birth plan. After a baby is almost stolen from the hospital, Sarah doubles down on her birth plan, meets a midwife named Rose, and shares her concerns. Rose encourages Sarah's concerns and is hired on the spot. The bad thing is, Rose is the woman who stole the baby at the beginning of the movie. She was wearing a disguise. Typical bad lifetime wig here. Rose has a temper and has been trying to find a baby for her daughter, Anne. Do you know the kind of torture I go through daily? Spending my life helping strangers bring children into the world. I give them life's greatest gift, and my own daughter can't even do the same for me. Tens of thousands of dollars on fertility treatments wasted. Everything I did for you. Really? For me? What did you say? At the home visit, Rose is ADAF. I've heard great things. Well, I'm glad you're in a good mood. I heard that you weren't so sold on me being here today. Oh, well, yeah, I've... Kevin doesn't agree, but it's very supportive of his wife. A new routine and diet of kale doesn't seem to be helping Sarah. Oh, wait. She is going into labor. The baby comes quick, and the new parents welcome a baby girl named Mary. With the baby already birthed, what could possibly happen in the rest of the movie? is called Beware of the Midwife, and her job is over. Of course, we get a baby-raising montage, and then a poisoning. Sarah finally comes around and agrees with Kevin that Rose is weird. They plan on firing the midwife, but she steals a house key, puts on her best lifetime I'm an intruder ensemble, and chloroforms the parents while they're sleeping. Then, she steals that baby! Anne doesn't want to go along with her mother's plan and attempts to book a ticket out of town. Rose doesn't appreciate that and verbally and physically abuses her daughter. You think you're leaving? You're too stupid for medical school. You know that, right? When Anne refuses to go along with her mom's plan, she is tied up to an indoor pillar. Why do people have those in their homes? Sarah and Kevin eventually wake up from their chloroform nap and have a lovely morning, until they realize that their baby has been stolen. Sarah reacts mildly at best. Where is she? What? What? Where is she? Kevin, where is she? The police are called and find the chloroform bottle in Kevin's car. He is arrested, leaving Sarah with no one left to turn to other than her sister, Danny. Just kidding. She calls the midwife. Rose comes over and asks a lot of questions about what the police were asking about. Then, she casually puts the stolen key back on the key ring. Sarah notices the keys are back, and her suspicions are confirmed. Instead of going to the police, Sarah goes to the doctor. Rose goes on the run after putting the baby unsafely in a car seat, and frees herself and calls Kevin and Sarah, telling them where Rose is headed. The bus station, Kevin gets knocked out with a tire iron and is rendered useless, while Sarah and Rose run around the terminal until Rose pulls out a gun and threatens Sarah. I just wanted to be happy. No one ever cares what I need. 
You're not taking my child. She's mine! The baby cries, distracting Rose momentarily, long enough for Sarah to grab the gun and pistol whip Rose. At the end of the movie, there is a birthday party for Mary. She's one. And that is Beware of the Midwife. So you might be thinking, like, wait a minute, Patrick, this seems like a movie you would totally like. It hits all the Lifetime tropes. We had, of course, a kidnapping, everything. Chloroform, poison. Uh, There's also the hot dad, Michael Xavier. Whoa. I mean, geez. Yes. He is so fine. And you know I love a good villain hiding in the bushes. I mean, that might be my favorite Lifetime thing. The movie also had a Black protagonist and antagonist, which has probably never happened in these type of Lifetime thriller movies. So yeah, you would think that I would be so down for this movie. But there is some issues here with the movie. I love seeing new Black actors at Lifetime. That was very fun. The only person who I had seen in another Lifetime movie was Michael Xavier, and he can be in all the Lifetime movies. Let's get his shirt off, okay? But yeah, it was really fun to see a bunch of new talent. I just wish they had better material to work with. The representation of Black people's birthing experiences was not well depicted. A little bit unfortunate timing, if you might say. The movie was released at the start of Black Maternal Health Week is a week to raise awareness to the disparities Black birthing people face and highlight the importance of Black birth workers. And again, you'd think that I would love this movie, but from what I learned afterwards, I would say that, you know, it is problematic and Lifetime can do better. And Lifetime has been doing better about raising Black voices and getting women and Black women behind the scenes. Let's keep that up and let's not forget the mission that uh, Lifetime has committed to. Because this movie kind of goes against that. Okay, and I think that wraps it up for this episode. If you want more at Lifetime and Court, you can check out court.com. And you can follow me at Patrick Miguel or the show at Lifetime and Court. Don't forget to check out our podcast, also called Lifetime and Court. It is currently on hiatus, but you can go back and listen to that back catalog where we cover all the movies that you could ever want to listen to. Don't forget to donate to our Kofi page. And don't forget to subscribe and like this video. There's like one person who doesn't like my videos, and I'm just going to say, why are you? Why do you keep watching them and not liking them? Just don't watch them. Or thanks for watching. <laughs>